So, um, who am I? Um, you've heard a brief introduction, but my name is Michael Callum. Um, that's my Twitter handle. Um, I am on the management team of a forum software called PHPB, which I imagine quite a few of you have heard of. Um, I also founded a PHP Surrey user group, and I am the secretary of the PHP FIG. Um, I'm a Brit, um, and uh, I'm sure most of you will have heard we have had quite a few problems recently with this thing called Brexit. Um, and as such, I have a book called Very British Problems. Um, my Twitter handle, if you want to tweet any feedback and stuff like that, that would be great. I'm going to be up here, so I'll be defenceless for the next uh, half an hour, 40 minutes or so. So if you have any unconstructive feedback, then now is definitely the time. Um, but you don't care about any of that, um, except for maybe this bit, because you're here for me um, to talk about the fig, right? But first, I'm going to talk about a little bit of history. Um, in 1994, uh, not much happened, actually. Um, it was a pretty boring year. Um, I looked through Wikipedia, and I looked at different things that happened in 1994, and there were three things of note that I could find. Um, one is quite a big deal. Uh, Nelson Mandela was inaugurated as the uh, president of so uh, South Africa. So uh, yeah, South Africa. Um, China got the internet, um, obviously in a, uh, not in the kind of form that we might have in the uh, Western world, um, and it's still subject to censorship, but it, was, it gained the internet. Um, and Harry Styles and Justin Bieber were born. Um, that was literally all I could find in this year, and I wanted to make my slide look symmetrical and find a third thing. So, Something else happened in 1994, though, something that has affected every single person in this room. Um, does anyone know who this gentleman here is? <laughs> it's, it's not Justin Bieber. Um, his, na <laughs> his, his name is Rasmus Ladov, um, and he uh, wanted a way to be able to track um, the number of visitors to his CV. Um, so he created uh, what would later become known as PHP. Um, little did he know the kind of effect that it would have on his CV. Um, not just in terms of being able to track visitors, but uh, in terms of creating a huge, uh, what has become PHP today. Um, in 1998, uh, these two people, um, that's Zeev and Andy, um, they uh, were at uni and they were trying to uh, write an e-commerce solution, um, not Magento. Uh, Magento is not quite that old. Um, and they discovered bugs in PHP itself. Um, and as a result, uh, they said to their university professor, if we fix some bugs in PHP Core, um, could we get some credit for that? And they said yes. Um, so they started working on PHP Core, and PHP 3 was released um, in June of 1998. Um, this was kind of same, around the same time that PHP Lib became a thing. Um, has anyone in here used PHP Lib? No, nobody. Fantastic. Um, so this was basically the first PHP framework. Um, it wasn't quite a framework in the way that we think of Symfony and Zen framework today. Um, and the last time I did this talk, I think there was one gentleman in the, uh, out of about 300 people that had used it. So um, it's not quite as common. Um, but it was essentially, it was a symphony of its day, I guess. Um, in 1999, Symfony went from having um, 100,000 PHP installs to 350,000 PHP installs. Um, and that was seen as breathtaking. Um, that was seen as an amazing number, um, and that kind of growth was unseen kind of in this kind of thing, and people were like, PHP, this could be a big deal. The web could be a big deal. Um, so people started doing things like writing books about it. This is the first ever published PHP book. Um, there was another book that was released very uh, around a similar time, but this, was, this is widely regarded as first. There was the first PHP conference, PHP Congress, which was, I believe, held in Germany. Um, this is not the American Congress, I might add, because it has a PHP flag. Um, and uh, yeah, also, there's a little PHP thing here, and it says, you can't read this, but it says in PHP we trust, um, instead of in God we trust. Um, credit, credit to uh, Frank de Jong uh, for some uh, lovely image editing there. Um, Pear, uh, who's used Pear? Awesome, a lot more of you. Um, Pear is also something as a relic of this time. Um, it's slightly less commonly used now. Um, this, uh, <laughs> uh, this is a tweet by someone you might have uh, met this morning. Um, it's slightly well, less well used now, but it was, this was a big thing back then. This was their main uh, package repository for PHP, um, and they also helped define a whole load of things like coding stand uh, standards and that kind of thing. Going forward into 2000, uh, the uh, PM Zend Engine was created. 
Um, and so we, we were really impressed that PHP 7 had a 2.4 speed increase, right? Um, when PHP 4 came out with the Zend engine, it could be um, recorded to have an up to 100 times speed increase. Now let me let that just sink in, 100 times faster. That's just ridiculous. Um, so PHP 4 was a big deal. Um, and the Zend engine was a uh, creation of, um, so Zend, um, the, the name of the company. So I mentioned Andy and Zeev earlier. It's actually their names put together. So Zed from Zeev and ND from the end of Andy's name. Um, and they created this company, and therefore the Zend engine. If we move to like 19, uh, 1999, 2000, we're also starting to see big PHP projects come about. Um, PHP I mentioned, because obviously I know about PHP Ruby. Um, PHP Nuke. Um, who's used PHP Nuke? Oh, OK, for quite a few of you. Um, it's, it's not so much of a thing now, um, but it was like 10 years ago, I guess. Um, PHP Ruby is definitely still a thing now, and I'm going to hold to that. Um, so lots and lots of projects were starting to come about. Uh, Drupal came out in 2000, WordPress in 2003, um, Symfony 2005 along with Joomla, um, and Zen Framework came back in 2006. And that's great, like all of these projects bringing up in the PHP ecosystem, um, bring it to where we are today. But we ended up with all of these little mini ecosystems. So Symfony had its own ecosystem uh, with Twig, Swift Mailer, um, Doctrine, um, and it, associated with those projects were a series of companies like KNP Labs and Sensio Labs. Um, in the same way that WordPress had its own ecosystem form around it with companies like Automatic and Human Made, um, they then, uh, Automatic then took in other companies like Gravatar. Um, around Laravel, you've got a whole series of projects like Blade, um, they, and Lumen, I think, is their micro framework. Drupal, Zen framework, exactly the same kind of thing. And you have these little ecosystems um, sort of splintering off from each other. Meanwhile, PHP user groups and conferences were starting to uh, also become a lot more popular as a lot more PHP developers did it professionally. Um, companies would pay for them to go to conferences and like this one here. Um, and you would end up with all of these little mini ecosystems related to a particular location. So the PHP Singapore community, which seems to be a thriving community and it's fabulous to see so many of you. Um, but you know, community in London, community um, in New York or the States if you want to think of it as a wider area. And there was a lack of centralization. There was no central PHP community body. Um, some of these ecosystems do have their own centralizations, so like WordPress has its own centralized uh, community ecosystem where they handle things um, and organize work camps, et cetera. We also didn't really have much dependency management. Uh, dependency management wasn't really a thing um, in, PH, in PHP properly um, until other things which I'll talk about in a minute. There was no primary package repository. And yes, there were pair and PHP classes, um, but I'll talk about them in a minute. But they didn't really make your life easy. They weren't easy to use in the way you might want. And this made it hard to include libraries. Um, you would have conflicts without classes and namespaces. So for example, um, Joomla and PHP both have a global called user. Um, so you, can't, you, would, you couldn't actually integrate them uh, and use it to share any of the same code because this user global uh, would cause problems in the same way that you might have uh, a function called um, session start uh, or the like. I mentioned PHP classes. Um, PHP classes was a great way for people to be able to share their code, um, but it had a quality problem and it had a distribution problem. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about PHP classes because I don't want to accidentally advertise them. Um, basically, you don't really touch PHP classes um, anymore. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the aim was good. People could put their code on there and other people could reuse it. So try not to reinvent the wheel. So we had all of these different packages that had their own ecosystems, our own conferences. And all of this just led to a divided community. Um, and a friend of mine, Larry Garfield, came up with this uh, phrase, um, or he reused it, I'm not sure, um, of getting off the island. And the idea of this is that each different project, each different ecosystem community is its own island. So WordPress is an island. And by the way, can I just say it's like a really nice island, and I wouldn't mind being this island. Um, PHP is its own island. Joomla, Symfony, even companies like Google. And you, you, you're your own island. All of those scripts that you've created that you then use every time uh, you create a new application. If you created your own little micro framework, which a lot of us used to do back in PHP 4 days, it would be the sort of starter set of files that we'd use when we went to start a new application. Um, 
but that's okay. Like, it's cool being your own island. Um, people liked rolling their own, and the PHP ecosystem supported this because the PHP was all about um, you can do your thing. Um, it's a language built on need, and it's, we have a lot of hobbyist developers. Um, put your hand up, actually, if you consider yourself more of a hobbyist than a professional PHP developer, just out of curiosity. Okay, it's so quite a few of you, including some of you who do it professionally as well. Um, so people like rolling their own, and the thing is, is that that low barrier to entry meant is it actually essentially brought the PHP community to where it is today. Being able to roll your own and being able to have this uh, very individualistic language um, was really important to PHP's development. But recently, we've been breaking the mold. One mind on its own can be absolutely amazing. Um, Fabian Potentier, um, who is a man who I admire greatly, um, he's brought, for example, a whole load of stuff from other languages into PHP and made them popular, for lack of a better word. Dependency injection containers, event dispatches. These kinds of things weren't very well used in um, the PHP uh, ecosystem until Fabian, as a, as a main person, started bringing these things to PHP, which is really awesome. Um, so he had lots of awesome ideas. Um, but with two people, you can come up with even more awesome ideas, right? Because you have double the amount of ideas. Um, except for I disagree with that. I think you get more than just those two people's ideas. I think you have all of these extra ideas that can come from that back and forth between people and those people working together. You can produce more than either of them could both on their own. If you've got PHPRuby working on an authentication system and you have WordPress working on an authentication system, then together, um, then each, individu um, each individually, they have great ideas about their own authentication systems. But if they're working together, then they can share that knowledge. And instead of just having the combined knowledge of the two uh, authentication systems, they can produce something that's a lot more reusable, something that would apply to more use cases than just PHPRuby or WordPress, or perhaps find w better ways of doing things that they're doing already. We started stopping reinventing the wheel. Um, who's heard of this term before? Oh, it's quite common. Reinventing the wheel is essentially uh, not, re, uh, not writing your own database abstraction layer for every single project, essentially. Um, and PHP has become a lot better at this. And this is from a variety of different ways. As David mentioned earlier, um, introducing object-oriented programming to PHP um, has been a huge step in this. Um, it has made um, being able to have reusable code so much easier, particularly with namespaces in 5.3, um, autoloaders, etc. Um, Composer, um, and also hand in hand with Composer Packagist, um, has, allowed, has solved the dependency problem. Um, it's allowed us to really inc easily include libraries and handle dependency resolution, um, which is something we'd not really had before. So whilst you could get a package from PHP classes, it wasn't really easy, it wasn't easy to stay up to date. Composer solves this problem for us. And packages provides a really great way for people to be able to share their code um, and then make it available to Composer. And finally, what I'm here to really talk about, the fig. Um, at PHP Tech, um, and this is a 2016 logo because uh, the 2009 logo is really awful, um, and this is the only version of it I can find. Um, a bunch of people came together um, and they sat around a table. Um, this was a couple of months before uh, PHP 5.3. Um, and they sat down, uh, representatives from different frameworks, so Kate PHP, Zen Framework, um, Aura, uh, Symphony. Um, and they said, how can we standardize autoloading with namespaces? This would be a cool thing to standardize. Um, so this autoloader then came out, which, most, which is then turned into PSR0. So who's heard of PSR0 of interest? Most of you, fantastic. Um, so this was um, about May, April time. Um, and it was fantastic. The PHP community, probably for the first time, had come together to standardize something across a huge variety of different projects. Um, and look at where we end up now. Like Almost all of you raised your hands. From this, they then said, hey, um, could this work for other things too? So they created a PHP standards mailing list on php.net, um, and then later on moved to Google Groups as became the PHP Framework Interoperability Group. Um, so like, what other things could this work for? Like coding guidelines? Um, Pair, Symfony, Laravel, Aura, all of these projects came together. All member projects were surveyed to see what they were doing at the time. Um, and that was then produced into PSR1 and PSR2 which are common coding guidelines that you can use, and it allows coding style fixes um, or uh, sc automated scripts in your um, continuous integration static in, um, analysis to detect any problems with that. Um, 
IDEs can now have it built in, which is wonderful. Then there was PSR3, uh, logging. Um, so uh, this simply allows a whole load of different log levels on the interface. Um, critical and exceptional exception occurred. Um, or we might have an emergency, like someone merging PHP 7.1 into 7.0, and it allows for a second argument, which is context. So in this case, the user was Davy. What a shame. Um, this allowed uh, libraries to stop relying on monolog or specific logging libraries, but to abstract it a little bit. Doc blocks. Um, who uses doc blocks? Who hates doc blocks? Oh, wow. That's, I'm quite surprised. Um, most people hate using doc blocks, right, well, writing doc blocks. They're really very useful. Uh, they're not very nice to write. It takes time. Um, so there was a PSR5 PR. Uh, pull request recently, which I merged, and it had 34 contributors. Um, so a huge number of people um, from all different kinds of projects discussing about how to do, um, how to do this. Uh, the work was being led by Mike Van Riel, who, was the lead who is the lead developer of PHP Documenter. Um, he stepped down. We're actually looking for someone to take up the reins on this at the moment. PSR6, caching. Um, so the way PSR6 works is you have a cache pool, which might be Redis, for example, and you get cache items from it. So um, on the cache pool, we can see if it has an item uh, called Trump presidency. And fortunately enough, uh, we do not have a Trump presidency, so it was uh, responded with false. Um, you can also get an item from uh, the cache pool. Um, so we're going to get Paul Draconis's status. Um, so we then get the item. We can then get the value um, of that particular thing, which in this case happens to be that he's working on his slides. Um, as he's still working on his slides and his talk is tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to set his status to panicking. Makes sense, right? Um, set the expiry date for in 24 hours' time, because hopefully he will not be panicking after he's done his talk. Um, and then we can save that to the cache pool. PSR7, uh, HTTP messages. Um, this is all about how uh, HTTP messages, um, re requests and response objects, um, are probably the most important things, um, both of which are uh, extend the um, message interface. So the message interface is any kind of HTTP message. Uh, response and uh, requests are the most common two types. types. Um, and there are a whole load of methods on this. This allows for things like middlewares to interact nicely. Uh, could I, is Michael Heap around? Mike Heap. Oh no, I think he's sleeping. Um, in which case, uh, Davey, do you want to come up on stage and join me? We're just going to give a little demonstration of uh, this, this latest PSR, which is the most important PSR, in my opinion. It's PSR8. Um, so PSR8 is the huggable interface, and it's all about how to hug people. So um, Davey, um, I, Adam, could you please inform me to hug Davey? Right. So he's doing this correctly. You now need to ask Davey to hug me back. There we go. And now we can form a hug. Thank you very much, Davey. So um, in case you hadn't worked out by now, this was an April Fool's joke. Um, PSR8 is uh, a slightly jokey PSR. Um, but it is still a PSR, um, so it's worth mentioning. Um, the, the, the odd thing is trying to how to deal with mutually hugging people, because obviously you, uh, and that's what the doc block says. So I, I had to hug Davey, um, and then he immediately had to hug me back, but he had to be huggable to be, for me to hug him. It's very complicated. Um, security. Um, PSR 9, PSR 10 um, cover security different things. So PSR 9 is about security advisories, so things like Sensio Lab Security Checker. It's a way of uh, organizations to publish their security advisories in a specific format um, so that it can be detected by automatic checkers. Um, and then security, uh, PSR 10 uh, is about security disclosure. So this is kind of designed to be an agreement between security researchers and projects um, to say, um, Look, if you report a security vulnerability to us, responsible disclosure, um, it's kind of like guidelines setting out uh, what responsible disclosure should, meet, should mean. So if you disclose a security vulnerability to us and then we don't do anything about it for 60 days, then you are entirely within your rights to go and tell the world about it and you'll have followed responsible disclosure. Um, and sort of it would also include things like we will patch this within a certain time. Um, so this, it doesn't, neither of these two actually relate to code at all, um, but they do relate to the PHP ecosystem. Um, that's being led by Michael Hess, who is the Drupal security lead. Um, he's currently for forming a new working group and reaching out to people at various different large projects. 
Um, the lead was formerly Lucas uh, Smith from Symphony, um, but he's had to step down uh, due to lack of time. PSR 11. Um, this is really simple. This is a container interface. Um, it contains two methods, uh, get and has. Um, get gets the service, and has checks if whether or not the container has the service. Um, the point of this PSR um, is more related to micro frameworks, where it is potential that you could have multiple containers operating around the same kind of place. I've not specifically had this problem. Um, apparently, it does occur, though. Um, you'd have to read the PSR to find out more about the use cases. Hyperlinks PSR 13. Um, this is quite a specific niche uh, problem that it solves. Uh, it's things with DAV projects. Um, it's more relating to sort of like APIs and stuff. If this relates to you, then you will probably know about it. Um, if it doesn't, then you probably won't. So it's not something that most of us have to worry about. Uh, I don't really, if I'm honest. Um, event management, and I don't mean this kind of event management. Um, <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's not paying any attention. <laughs> Um, no, it's actually about um, the event dispatcher. Um, so being able to dispatch events, etc., without actually caring about uh, what event dispatcher happens to be around, um, just caring that there is one. Middleware. Um, so who's used middlewares and stuff before? Oh, fab, quite a few of you. Um, middlewares are quite a recent thing in PHP. Um, they are a lot easier to do now that we have PSR 7 and we have a standardized uh, object that a request or response might be. Um, and essentially, it's where an initial response object, for example, uh, is generated. And being able to interact with that and modify it before it then gets sent to the client and vice versa for a request. Whilst, we were working, whilst people were working on the HTTP middleware PSR, um, PSR 17, um, HTTP factories, uh, people discovered that actually it's kind of hard to make a PSR 7 object. Um, so we should probably standardize a way of doing that as well. Um, so that's PSR 17. So basically, all the things. Um, I've talked about quite a few things we're doing already. Um, we're also looking at doing container service definitions, so like your services.yaml file, uh, things like that, but a way of actually be able to uh, transfer that so you can have multiple different um, framework agnostic uh, libraries, but still being able to register services. A console component, a uh, console PSR, um, which would essentially be uh, the equivalent of PSR 7 for console applications. Promises event loop, this sounds really interesting. Um, async is slowly becoming a much bigger thing in PHP right now. Um, something really exciting, um, something we can hopefully sink our teeth into a bit more in the coming years. Um, so the, a lot of async people, so Icicle, React, PHP, are currently working on an event loop PSR um, to then follow on to things like a, uh, a um, uh, event loop PSR. It hasn't gone for an entrance vote yet, but it's something that they're working on. Um, they're just waiting for some internal changes in the fig to happen before they look into doing that for sure. <coughs> Template engines. Um, so Zend framework, when they were actually working on Expressive, um, they found a common interface between um, plates um, Zen Frameworks templating engine, which I can't remember the name of, and Twig, um, so that or they could be used agnostically, which is really cool. Um, this is something that Matthew was looking to introduce to the fig quite soon, which is really awesome. Um, and similarly with routing, um, which is routing because I'm a Brit, not routing. Um, but uh, yeah, so a very similar thing. But it's not necessarily just about PSRs for um, code. Um, who's heard of GoPHP5? A couple of you. Um, so GoPHP5 was an initiative to try and get projects and hosts al uh, alike to try and upgrade to PHP5 altogether. Um, and there was some discussion about the fig, seeing if we could do a GoPHP7 kind of thing. Um, that seems to have fallen a little bit by the wayside. I'm not sure if it will be revived. But the fact is, is it's not just about PSRs. Um, there are also updates to PSRs, so PSR12 uh, for coding style with PHP7 functionality, PSR4, which improved auto-loading. Um, PSR 15 and 17 are kind of extensions of PSR 7. Um, and alternatives. So PSR 16, uh, which, of which the editor is Paul Traconis, who I think is um, not in the room at the moment, but he'll be doing a talk tomorrow morning. Um, so that's an alternative simple cache PSR. Um, there's also talk of potentially like an asynchronous uh, compatible PSR 7, which would be cool. So what actually is the fig? I've kind of talked a lot about what it's done, but I haven't actually said what it is. Um, and because it's a really cool image, I'm going to use it twice. Um, 
it's a bit like the PHP Congress. Um, it's a bunch of representatives from different uh, projects, member projects, uh, coming together to discuss things. Um, sometimes it's likened to the United Nations of PHP. Um, but whatever, you, like, uh, whatever comparisons you wish to draw up between other organizations, um, that's, it's, it's essentially a bunch of people coming together to work together. It stands for the PHP Framework Interoperability Group. Um, there's a lot of discussion as to whether or not this title is really accurate because it's turned into more of a standards group. Um, we have a lot more than just frameworks as members. We have packages like Joomla, PHPRuby, Drupal. Um, we also have libraries like Monolog and Jackalope, in addition to frameworks, obviously. And we produce PHP standards recommendations. Um, and I just want to draw your attention to this last word, recommendation. Um, we're not telling you what to do. We're not telling you that you must do your caching libraries like this. We're saying, this is a standard which you can follow if you like, and then you can be interoperable with other libraries that also will use a standard. But you don't have to use it. That's not something we require. It's not dictating to the PHP community what to do. It's offering a standard that has been produced by a bunch of people that have expertise or projects that have relevance in that area. And the ultimate goal is interoperability, but it's not our only concern. Um, PSR 2, PSR 9, PSR 10, and PSR 12 uh, don't, really, uh, don't really concern interoperability, interoperability, but then PSR, and I'm going to read this off my slides because it's a long list of numbers, PSR 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 all do concern interoperability. So that's a primary concern, but it's not our only concern. But it only works if people use it, right? So PSR3, who uses that? It's a logger interface, so Monolog uses it. Um, Analog. Um, and a project called Klogger. Um, PSR6 is used by uh, a work, uh, now becoming quite popular project called PHP Cache. Uh, it's used by Symfony, um, their cache component, and Stash. Um, and PSR7. PSR7, even if it's not implemented natively, um, it's used in a lot of frameworks, so uh, Slim, so in Framework 2, Laravel, Symfony, Drupal, um, I could list lots of projects um, that use PSR7. Um, it's becoming quite a big deal, and as I said, not every project supports it natively, but most have a bridge for it at least. Um, and PSR1 and PSR2, coding style. Um, I, when I was writing my slides, I, I turned around to a bunch of friends and I said, can you do me a favor and just list to me a bunch of PHP projects? And I put them on this list. Um, until I'd had roughly enough to sort of even it all out. Um, there are so many more projects that use PSR1, PSR2. Um, one of the differences between PSR1 and PSR2 um, is that PSR1, basically everyone is using without realizing it. Um, one of the main things in PSR1 is that it's actually things that affect interoperability. So for example, don't include side effects, um, such as an any set or an echo in the same file as you would include your business logic, like a class. Um, so they're actually things that inter affect interoperability. PSR2 is things that don't matter, but we wanted to provide a, a, a guide for people. So one is called the co uh, basic coding standard. Uh, PSR2 is called the coding style guide, and those words are very particular. Um, PSR0, um, basically any project on, almost every project on packages uses PSR0 or PSR4. And as of six minutes past three today, that's 107,000 packages. Um, so quite, quite a few. Um, this was just a, uh, I did a reach out on Twitter and I said, guys, could you help me fill in this, uh, this table of projects and add some other projects of your own uh, with who supports PSRs? So every white space is one that's just not been filled in yet. Everything that's red is someone who doesn't support something and everything that's green is where they do support a PSR. So basically it looks quite green, which is my point. A lot of projects are using and adopting PSRs. And a lot of projects are part of the FIG. Um, this is just a small sample of some of the projects. You know, you've got Symfony, PHP, Drupal, uh, Buzz. Um, Buzz don't have a logo, so I just use Buzz Lightyear. Um, Z Framework, Symfony, Composer. But it's not just about the projects. It's also about the people. Um, this is just a small selection of people who are involved with the FIG. And you don't have to just be a voting member. You can be a secretary. Um, there's Samantha up there who um, will be doing a keynote tomorrow, who unfortunately isn't here today. Um, but there's a whole load of other people. Most of these up here are voting members, um, but some of these people aren't. Um, I, uh, we've got, uh, who have we got up there that's not a voting member? Uh, Woody Gilk, um, who is the editor of PSR um, 15 and 17, the middleware and factories PSRs. 
Um, we've also got Brian, uh, Chuck Reeves, who is um, uh, editing, um, I believe, PSR 14 off the top of my head. So a whole load of people, and you don't have to be a member project um, or a lead developer of a member project to be involved. In the fixed history, we've had 58 projects as members. Um, we've had over 70 people representing those projects. We've had four secretaries, um, potentially more at the end of this month when secretary ele elections end. Uh, we've had 16 different PSR editors. Uh, some people have doubled up and some people have switched. Uh, we've had 35 people working on working groups of PSRs. 1,374 pull requests on at various repositories. Over 15,000 mailing list posts. And as of three, six minutes past three today, we have 3,198 mailing list members, um, which is 90 more than when I did this talk two weeks ago, um, so I had to update the number. Um, we get about 12 posts on the mailing list every day, and about 50 topics a month. Um, and whilst that sounds like, and whilst when you look at it, it kind of looks like there's a lot of drama going on, um, I did some number crunching, and 97% of posts on the mailing list are technical actually about PSRs, not about internal bickering or bylaws or anything like that. 97% are actually relating to technical PSRs. That's a really cool number when you consider the kind of reputation uh, that the PHP, has, the PHP fig has if you look on Reddit. 350,000 PHP installs. That's what we were proud of back in 1999. That's something that everyone was like, wow, this, we've taken off, we've, we've made it. 350,000 installs. That's more than a quarter of a million. Um, now we have millions, millions of PHP installs. And the PHP fig projects um, power about 15% of the internet. 15% of the internet, that's quite large. I mean, WordPress is slightly larger than that, but the fact is, is that 15% of the internet is still a huge deal. And the fact that we can all work together um, is really awesome. So um, this is uh, Lord Kitchener, um, who is from the uh, Your Country Needs You um, uh, posters um, for, uh, in the UK. And I want you all to stand up for a minute. I'm sorry if you've got a laptop on your lap, you're very welcome to not stand up. Could everyone else stand up for a minute? This is your exercise workout for the week. Right. So I now want you to sit down if you are the maintainer of a library that you know uses a PSR. If you're a maintainer of a library that uses a PSR, then you can sit down. Awesome. Um, can you now sit down if you have uh, contributed to uh, Symfony uh, or Zen Framework or any one of the many projects that I've mentioned uh, in this talk, if you've contributed? Uh, if you've contributed any kind of code or if you've worked with code on any of those projects. Okay. Um, Drupal, Joomla, Laravel, anything like that? Okay. And now sit down if you have uh, used Composer on your projects and you've had an autoloader, which is PSR 0, PSR 4. Am I the only one standing? Right. So, um, <laughs> So every, you can, you can sit down now. Um, <laughs> everyone in this room, except for two people, has been impacted by the PHP fig. Every single one of you, whether or not you've heard of it or done much with it, yeah, you're very welcome to give it a round of applause if you want. Um, but the fact is, is that like, a bunch of people came together with a very small but noble aim, and that was to try and communicate to work a bit more. You can put your laptops back on your lap, and we're gonna ask you to stand up again. Um, because together we can do better. Um, I kind of like the way that that phrase rolls. So. Um, ultimately, that's what the fig is kind of about. Uh, sometimes there is drama. Um, I'm not going to say that there isn't, but that's not what this talk is about. It's not about our internal processes. Ultimately, the fig is just a bunch of people sitting around a table, working out how they can work better together, and how we can make PHP as a whole ecosystem a lot better. And together, the fig is kind of helping with that. The fact that almost everyone in the room was sitting down has been impacted by the fig, an organization that was only set up six years ago, seven years ago, um, is huge, I think. And it's making development easier. It's helping minimize friction when you're switching between libraries or if you're um, trying to make multiple frameworks and applications work together. 
It encourages good practices, um, which we try and promote in the PSRs. It allows projects to communicate about other things, whether that's GoPHP 7 or um, collaborating on those security practices I mentioned with 9 and 10. And it's not always easy, but I always say that nothing worth having ever really is. We'll keep going. Um, under one roof, bringing people from every PHP split ecosystem together for mutual benefit, because ultimately that's the way the fig works, in that everyone puts in a little and everyone gets out something. PHP fig does great work because it brings projects together, ecosystems collide, and it promotes interoperability, collaboration, and good standards. And finally, I'd just like to end on a quote by Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Am I the only one in the room that doesn't got questions? If you just shout it out, I can repeat it. It's fine. Hi. So from a business perspective, as when you have inter complete interoperability between all frameworks and in general PHP, what would, it wouldn't make any business sense because there's a lack of differentiation. What's your take on this? Um, so the, that's the difference between um, being able to work, uh, work agnostically of your individual framework um, and the difference between the actual implementation of it. So the implementation can work very differently. Um, it could be built to a different a different kind of performance. It could be built with different feature sets. Um, it could uh, ultimately have different preferences um, as, a de as an end developer. We're not trying to make everything the same. We're not trying to have one common PHP framework. We're trying to be able to have it so that you can create um, framework agnostic widgets. Um, so I should be able to create a, a logging library, and I shouldn't have to care which framework I'm going to be interacting with. Um, in the same way, I should be able to create a caching library and I should be able to log things without knowing that I'm going to be used with a specific logger. Um, or I should be able to create um, uh, an HTTP object and be able to um, pass it between Joomla, WordPress, and PHP for example, um, and manipulate it at different points. So it's about being able to have those frameworks work together. It's not about making them the same. It's about making some of the interfaces the same so that you can go towards a world where we have those framework agnostic widgets. Uh, All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No? Yes? I guess not. No more? Awesome, thank you very much. All if right. you want to chat about fig stuff or pitch review stuff or whatever, uh, then feel free to come find me. I will be loitering around for the rest of the conference. So. All right. Thank you, Michael. <laughs>